Thank you very much, uh, Nick, for that, uh, that, that introduction, teeing it up nicely. Uh, it's great to, to be here today. Um, thank you to the uh, University Business uh, uh, Collaboration that has brought this gathering uh, together. Um, like, uh, like many of you, I was intrigued by the, uh, by the title, the, the black and white uh, Chester. Um, I wondered if it was, as a Newcastle United uh, season ticket holder, maybe I thought it was a tribute to my team, but I guess probably in this environment that's the least likely explanation. Um, we, uh, we're also, of course, uh, living in an era where, at this time in history, everything seems polarised into uh, to black and white. We don't always recognise the shades of grey that, in practice, we all have to contend with day to day. I think Chris will attest to that, given the um, debates that have been happening in the House of, uh, House of Commons this, uh, this week. And it, um, it caused me as well to reflect on the fact that the development of cities, not just here, of course, not just in, in the UK, but around the world, does tend to create a polarisation of views. Um, in fact, various people have declared the, the death of cities uh, as technology uh, apparently diminishes the importance of physical communities uh, in favour of virtual networks where business and personal interactions take place invisibly without any relevance to the place where people happen to be logging on. And I think there's, you know, there's a number of commentators over the years have declared the death of cities um, pretty prematurely, in my view. Um, other people, of course, will see the future as being made within our, within our cities because those personal interactions which are critical for modern economies um, are much more intensified in a vibrant urban environment. And the uh, environmental issues that we face as a planet can be better addressed if people congregate into populations that are better able to be served by environmentally friendly infrastructure, particularly good quality public transport systems. Um, similarly, uh, again, another black and white argument, larger city regions, your Londons, your Manchester, are often pitted against smaller towns and smaller cities. It's often been argued that the future lies in mega city regions where their growth is sucking in the economic value from a very broad catchment area. Um, but this, in, this argument is in turn countered by those who argue in favour of communities, stability uh, and inclusive growth. And a concern, of course, that the focus on a small number of very large cities is leaving many communities behind, something that, again, we've seen in the debate about Brexit. Um, of course, there are also those in this country who make the argument that the growth of London is so critical, uh, not just to the, to the UK, but as a global city, that our emphasis sh as a nation should be on supporting and accommodating its expansion, uh, if necessary, at the expense of lower relative growth in other regions of the, of the country. Uh, whereas here in the north of England, we're championing the growth potential of our region uh, as a complement to London, not necessarily in competition, but as a complement to London, uh, rebalancing a very unbalanced economy uh, and reversing the pulling power of the, of the capital. But I'd be interested to hear what Tim has to say about some of that experience of graduates leaving Chester being attracted down south and the efforts that we're taking to address that. Um, an imbalance as well, of course, that means that two and a half times more per head of population is spent on transport infrastructure in the south of England uh, than it is in the north. But um, uh, as, uh, as Nick explained, the, the black and white title, uh, which I, th I think is a, uh, a title of genius for this debate, uh, also makes relevant uh, to reference to the distinctiveness of the city of Chester itself, uh, its architecture uh, and an amazing heritage. And, uh, and this, I think, gives us a starting point for considering Chester's place in these great debates about the, the future of our cities. Um, every community has distinctive assets that determine its future, su future success. And, uh, and the city of Chester, within the wider borough of uh, West Cheshire, has assets in abundance. Uh, a quality of life that's attracting more people to live and work here. A uh, strong and growing business sector in which many of you are active leaders. Uh, an industrial and manufacturing base not far from here in the city, uh, particularly based around the Mersey. Uh, excellent public services and a good record of high quality delivery by our public sector organisations. Um, we are, of course, a gateway not just to the 
to the north of England, but also into North Wales, something that's becoming increasingly important as people seek to make connections across boundaries that otherwise might be fracturing the United Kingdom apart. And, uh, of course, we are a, an enviable strategic location uh, with nearly five million people living within an hour's drive of this city. And, of course, as you're all very proud of, an attractive city centre with fantastic cultural attractions. So um, perhaps we shouldn't be too surprised that uh, just last week the latest economic growth figures published by the Office of National Statistics shows that um, the Cheshire West and Chester Borough has the fastest growing economic growth rate if measured in terms of gross value added per head of population than any local authority in England or Wales. The fastest economic growth rate per head of population of any local authority area in England or Wales. There's a couple in Scotland that beat us, so I try to uh, focus on England and Wales for that particular statistic. Um, and of course, we operate within the wider Cheshire and Warrington Local Enterprise Partnership area, uh, which is the fastest growing local enterprise partnership area in England, uh, and is now an economy worth over £30 billion. Pounds. But, uh, as Nick has already alluded to, this uh, evidence of very positive economic performance does sit alongside a certain pessimism, uh, one might even say cynicism, about the future of our city centre and many other city centres around the country. And, uh, and this concern is, is an entirely understandable reaction to radical changes taking place in the nature of our retail markets, for reasons that you'll be very, very familiar with. The growth of online shopping, uh, the convenience of out-of-town shopping centres, and obviously in Cheshire Oaks we have one of the most successful in Europe, itself a huge asset for the borough just six miles away. Uh, a large number of uh, well-established high street names, many of which have been going for decades, if not hundreds of years, uh, reducing their footprint or, or going out of business altogether. These pressures are very real, not unique to Chester, but very real, and it's easy to draw the conclusion from that that we're now entering a period of managed decline of our high streets. Um, but I believe, and, and I hope over the debate this morning, you'll believe as well when you see the, the evidence and the assets and opportunities available in this particular city that we need to resist that conclusion of managed decline. We need the confidence to invest in the great assets that we have here in this city uh, and pass on to future generations an even better city than the one that we have inherited. And that is the guiding principle that underpins Chester's commitment to the Northgate development site. Um, I'm uh, very fortunate to arrive here in, uh, as the chief executive uh, appointed just five months ago uh, at a critical point in the development of the Northgate scheme. Uh, and of course, I've arrived here in Chester uh, actually for the first time here since I uh, grew up just 30 miles north of this borough in Lancashire, um, and it's been great to see the exciting opportunities that are presented to us as a city. Um, I'm hugely excited by the potential for Chester to become a, a flagship of the northern region, uh, and I'm inspired as well by the very long-term commitment shown by our local political leaders uh, on a cross-party basis, many of which are in the audience today, determined to use this opportunity to take the city forward. One of the characteristics of city development is it takes a long-term approach. Uh, decisions made now need to be followed through for, in some cases, 5, 10, 15 years. Uh, the roots of the Northgate scheme are long in the past and its uh, uh, outcomes will be delivered long into the future. So that sustainability of political commitment uh, and commitment across the wider city is absolutely critical to making these things work. Um, we have, however, even in the short term, taken some important steps forward. Uh, this autumn, we, uh, we completed all the necessary legal processes to establish the ownership and control of the site, uh, a vital precondition for successful development. Uh, we've also reassessed the focus of the scheme to reflect these, uh, this evidence of changing retail markets. And there's now a much stronger focus on high-quality public realm, leisure, cultural and art att artistic attractions uh, and uh, city centre living through an enhanced focus on the residential market. 
We recently secured unanimous backing from our councillors for a commitment to the next stage of the scheme, investing £60 million in a staged approach, triggered by benchmarks that show progress on the business case. And I'm, I'm pleased that only this week uh, we reached the first of those trigger points and are now moving forward to the design stage. Um, as a consequence of that, and I think in recognition of some of the points that Nick's made about the need for us to engage more positively and comprehensively with our local business community, uh, and with leadership from the Chester Growth Partnership, uh, we'll be stepping up our engagement with the local business community across a much wider, with a much wider and stronger dialogue uh, across the city. From uh, mid-February, we'll have emerging designs uh, to share with people, to be challenged on whether they meet the choices that you think should be made about the design of this scheme and help to shape the vision of the future. We'll open up the, uh, uh, the, the empty shop you might have seen with the Northgate um, signage, but, but often you know, with nothing behind that uh, in the forum. Uh, and we'll invite businesses, residents and visitors in to share their thoughts on our emerging plans. And of course, online engagement will also be critical for us to make sure that people uh, get to understand the scheme uh, and have the opportunity to challenge and shape it going forward. These aren't uh, blueprints that are presented on a take it or leave it basis. This is for debate across the city. It's really important that we sponsor and support um, that sort of vibrant debate, given the importance of this scheme to the future of Chester. Uh, we're also uh, sometimes in the background, but we're taking forward very productive discussions with high quality restaurants that want to come to Chester, uh, as well as local independent restaurants and the market traders who are committed to be part of the new scheme. Um, and of course the new cinema as well that's planned for the site. Um, Chester market itself is giving us uh, great confidence that the demand is there to justify the significant investment we're making as a city. Um, I understand when the bus station was moved to the new, uh, albeit award-winning, uh, interchange, um, there were fears that uh, this part of the city would decline further and the market would struggle. Um, so with targeted marketing, very active curation by the council, longer opening hours, more active social media presence, uh, and with a new and reinvigorated food and retail offer, the market has now pushed itself into the top ten nationally and we're going to be fascinated to hear more about uh, Altrincham because that's very much um, a beacon for us to learn from as we take this uh, really exciting opportunity forward. In 2018 we welcomed over a million visitors to the market uh, and building on this success the new market is being planned as part of the Northgate scheme and that in itself will become a new iconic destination, one of the best in Europe, one of the best in Europe will uh, compete at least with Altrincham and maybe around the world. Uh, we expect at least to double the number of visitors that we receive once that new market is up and running. And you can just feel the excitement building as we come forward with those plans. Um, overall, Chester is already attracting over 12 min million visitors every year. Um, but we believe there's the potential to support and inspire uh, many more. Um, the city already hosts around 80 annual events and festivals and the success and popularity of those events is encouraging us to be bolder, to do more and bigger events and to attract more and more tourists and visitors to the city and to manage it effectively as we increase those, those tourist numbers. Uh, so we want to bring forward a new tourism strategy working with local business leaders, our great local attractions including the zoo, the race course, uh, the university, the Chester Growth Partnership uh, and the CH1 uh, Business Improvement District and Marketing Cheshire who then place this in a wider county perspective. One of, the, one of the first documents I was presented with as I came into the council was the, the One City Plan. Uh, the plan dates back to 2012 um, and was created following advice from a panel of international experts and feedback from around 1,200 12, residents, business and other uh, private, public and voluntary sector organisations. Um, so it's worth looking back at the progress we've made in delivering that ambition since that plan was established. Um, more than £250 million, £250 million invested in major projects. Uh, and where better to celebrate that than here in Story House, which itself is a £37 million investment, now recognised nationally and internationally as an example of how to combine a modern approach to library services with a vibrant, accessible and inclusive new cultural destination. 
one million visitors here in the first year. Uh, and we were very pleased to receive uh, an award from the from Guardian. This is the Guardian Public Service Awards, where not just for councils, but for public service organisations around the UK, um, uh, promoting the high quality examples of public service. Uh, and we were awarded that not just for Story House, but also for the wider impact that it's had across library services borough wide. Um, to quote from The Guardian, uh, Cheshire West and Chester has rejected retrenchment and gone on the front foot with a stunning investment that has breathed new life into its libraries and triggered a much wider cultural and community awakening. And we've also seen many other examples of growth and confidence. Um, City Place, developed with the uh, uh, ongoing Central Business uh, Quarter project with the new Waitrose and Moxie Hotel. 100 new housing units at Tower Wharf. Public realm improvements, including the King Charles Tower Green, Grosvenor Park, the resurfacing of the groves. The continued success and growth of Chester Business Park. Um, the interchange itself, but also developments on Frodsham Street. Uh, links from the River Dee through to the Roman Gardens uh, and the upcoming uh, Chester uh, City Gateway programme. Uh, and I'm interested to hear as well, I think you'll hear more today about some of the debates across the city about the future of Dee House, which is uh, both a great opportunity for us but somewhat problematic and uh, requires a debate across the city about the future for that particular um, conundrum. Uh, we, of course, welcome 15,000 students at Chester University. Uh, I'm looking forward to hearing from Tim about the wider impact that the university plays. Uh, and we are determined, Tim and I, to cement a really strong partnership between the university and the council uh, in the years ahead. Last year, the, the city achieved um, what's called purple flag accreditation. That's equivalent to the, to the green flag that's awarded to parks and the blue flag that's awarded to, to beaches, but the purple flag is there to recognise the safety and vibrancy of a town or city centre, particularly those that attract uh, a, a vibrant nighttime economy. And over recent months, the council and CH1 have been developing a new public Wi-Fi solution for the, for the city. This is a very exciting new project, and you'll hear more about this over the coming months, not only to create new opportunities for many visitors to the city, um, but also actually the capability to help businesses with a digital platform to promote their own business, uh, including discounts and offers uh, to the potential customers, those 12 million visitors to the city. Um, and of course, only last week, the council gave the green light to a substantial expansion of the city itself with the Wrexham Road development, bringing 1,400 new homes. Um, another sign of confidence in the future of our city and also delivering that strategic local plan for growth, new housing, and infrastructure. Um, but we're also very clear that the future of the city isn't just determined within, within its boundaries. Um, successful cities of the future will be those with the best possible connections to other successful economic centres. So, for example, we host the, the Mersey D Alliance, which is a, a coalition of interest from across Cheshire, Merseyside and North Wales, uh, working to improve connections with this area uh, in which over a million people live. Uh, and supporting our connections both internally within that region but also nationally and indeed internationally. Um, as we speak today, the leader of the council, Sam Dixon, is, um, is in Wales meeting the chief executive of HS2 uh, in her role as the vice chair of transport for the north, uh, discussing plans to establish connections from the new HS2 station in Crewe across that region and with the connections into North Wales. We're also hosting a board meeting of Transport for the North here in Chester next month and a further Transport for the North meeting in, in March, which is one of a series of events to launch a new strategic transport plan across the north of England, of which we are a very strong and influential part. Um, Cheshire may not be the geographical centre of the north, but we are a powerhouse within the northern powerhouse. and We are playing a critical role in its future development and want to strengthen that further in the months and years ahead. Long-term transformation of this sort is delivered not just by the council, not even mainly by the council, but by the city as a whole, acting with a common purpose and uniting behind a clear vision. Um, Chester can be proud of its future just as we're proud of its past. Uh, we've got in place many of the building blocks for that success and we've achieved a lot together. 
Um, at a personal level, I'm delighted to have joined Team Chester and Team Cheshire, and I look forward to walking, working with you in delivering on what I think is an amazing potential. Thank you. So uh, the format of today really is we, we'll have the speakers and then later on we'll have a panel discussion um, before we break for lunch. However, Andrew has to um, shoot off to another meeting somewhere else, so he's actually agreed to take some questions now from the audience. So if anyone's got any questions you'd like to ask Andrew, oh, come on, don't be shy. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think that's a very, very good suggestion, and um, uh, and I, I also accept Nick's, Nick's point that the council hasn't always, in the past, sort of given those updates. Sometimes we've been very focused on the requirements of individual projects, and we haven't always communicated that that big picture. One one of the things we are looking at with the Chester Growth Partnership is a new website uh, on which we'll sort of bring together all of the information about what's happening in the city. Uh, very much focused around the delivery of the one city plan, so being able to describe what's happened in the past what the plans are to, in the future, all in one place, so that it can be better communicated, but also participating in events like this, and this is in itself a great opportunity. Yeah. Roger Croston, I think there's nobody more Chester than me, I was born 300 yards away. <laughs> Former um, Renaissance Board member. Might I suggest we re-invite the Urban Land Institute back to Chester to see what progress we've made since they came in 2010 and formulated the One City Plan. And your point about long term in Chester is very valid. Here's the Greenwood Plan, August 1945. <laughs> it's almost word for word for the One City Plan. And we're not really achieving long term goals. And um, I hope we can improve the situation. Um. I, I, I knew this would happen as someone who's been working in Chester for five months that I was uh, <laughs> going to be overwhelmed by the sheer knowledge and uh, historical perspective that was likely to, to be in this room. Um, and I absolutely I, I agree with you. I think actually that concept of have inviting in external <laughs> perspectives um, in my remarks today, I'm you know, deliberately focusing on the challenges facing cities, not just here, but around the world, and maybe describing how some of the things that we're dealing with in Chester resonate with cities uh, across the world so I'm you know very much in favor of uh, of opening ourselves up for external scrutiny and it's it's been great to see actually that that exercise that was done uh, is still very much a talking point eight years on and I'm sure will be for for many years to come and uh, yes I absolutely agree with you that that's a really important part of our uh, way of keeping ourselves informed about the um, you know the uh, lessons from elsewhere as much as lessons that we can learn from our own history. Uh, two quick points. Bo both of those reports, the One City Plan and the Urban Land Institute, are actually on the website that you've got details of on that little card that you've got. So if you want to have a look at that and catch up on it, that's fine. And also, um, I did say at the beginning, it's all about positivity. <laughs> and Andrew is, is here as, as, a, as an open and honest broker, I guess, to, 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 to put forward the point of view of the council. So uh, that's, where we, that's where we stand. So. Yes, sir. My name is Mike Pond, I chair of the Residents Association in Chester. If it, there are, is good news, why does it feel like that? And I think the second point is, given that residents actually contribute to this, the total council income, why is the debate purely about business, university, mm. and the council, the council? Why are residents not asked, invited, encouraged to play a bigger role? When they live here, yeah. they could contribute a lot more to make it uh, I, I, I agree with you. Um, I mean, this is obviously a business event, so we're focusing on, on the um, on, on the interests of business. But you know, we're a democratic institution, and our councillors are there to represent the residents, and do so very actively in all aspects of the decisions we, we take. Um, the, uh, uh, the, the the plans for the city we are deliberately making open. We're inviting people in. I described the, uh, the the use of the forum shop, which is currently empty, but we're going to make good use of that as a way of uh, being open and clear about plans for the city and inviting residents in. Um, and of course, a number of local engagements take place through residents associations in wards uh, around the city, 
um, and we'll exploit all of those channels to, to engage as many people as we can from the local area because the views of residents is actually what's critical here. <clears throat> I think we'll make this the last one. Hi there, sorry, uh, Neil Castleman, I'm, I'm a planner of this journey, um, ex, ex of Cheshire West. Um, I just have to <laughs> ask a, a quick question about planning because, you know, obviously a lot of the the, um, the, the big exciting projects, you know, are, are absolutely rely on planning in order to, to, to get off the ground. And given that since the onset of austerity, planning has been one of the hardest hit services, <laughs> not only in Pratt but nationally, um, with resources, you know, hugely reduced. And, I just, I just wonder sort of what, what the, the plan is really to make sure that, that the, local, the local planning authority is sufficiently resourced to make sure that all of these, um, all of these plans can, can see reality. Um, well, I mean, first of all, thank you for the recognition of the financial constraints within which we are operating, which are very real right across the local government sector. Uh, big reductions. We've had a 40% reduction in the funding that we receive from central government, which in the past was a much larger part of our of our own income um, and uh, we've had to make reductions and actually those reductions aren't over we're, we're going to have to come forward over the next few years with further uh, reductions in council spending in order to meet the requirements of the uh, local government settlement which you know was announced a few few months ago um, so yeah I mean the, I can't deny we're under significant pressure um, I mean actually Cheshire West I think has um, sustained capabilities that have been lost in other parts of the country so in some respects I, I feel this could be a bit of an asset for us that we are able to uh, retain some um, some really good expertise in our planning and economic development functions uh, that we may have less money but it doesn't necessarily mean we can perform less effectively um, and of course for the planning system itself there are systems of fees and charges and arrangements where in a sense the more the business the more resources are available to be able to support uh, to support that business. So um, you're absolutely right to draw attention to that and I know it's a big national issue um, and we're very alive to that. We recognise, however, our responsibilities because planning is taken very seriously in Cheshire West. It's one of my observations coming here from, uh, from the northeast of England that uh, our planning committee is, you know, uh, robustly independent. They require strong evidence before they take a decision and we really need to, to respond to that. I'm actually speaking today, of course, just around the corner. There's a very big public inquiry on a particularly, uh, particularly um, contentious planning issue related to uh, fracking. So, you know, we are very aware that this is a, a major responsibility of the council. Okay. Thank you very much indeed, Andrew. Okay. Thank you. Cheers.